Um, thank you, everybody, for having me here. It's just so wonderful. Um, uh, and, you know, it hasn't escaped me that uh, it's perfectly placed because we've got Tiffany's out the front as you walk, walk out and this fantastic Tigers kind of banner just behind us here. So go Tigers. I reckon I can say that for another week and before people start throwing things at me. What a wonderful welcome to country, Annie Dai. Um, always beautiful. I think that, uh, you know, she is just an absolute star. So thank you, Annie Dai, for your wonderful welcome to country. And I'd also like to pay my respects to your elders past and present and to all elders from other communities who may be here today, representatives of the world's longest continuing culture. I am really so delighted to be here today at the third national LGBTI ageing and aged care conference um, of, you know, and Victorian, the Victorian government is really a proud sponsor of this conference. And congratulations to Gay and Lesbian Health Victoria and La Trobe University for coordinating the conference and bringing together carers, services and experts to make sure the needs of LGBTI people are met. Gay and Lesbian Health Victoria and Val's LGBTI Ageing and Aged Care, formerly known as Val's Cafe, um, are two of Victoria's leading organisations, as you all well know, uh, who are working to improve the health and wellbeing of older LGBTI Victorians. Looking over the conference agenda, it looks fantastic. It's exciting to see speakers and participants from aged care service providers, local councils, community health organisations and, of course, health professionals. Australia has an ageing population. Uh, approximately 10% of this population identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and gender diverse or having an intersex variation. It is critical that we plan for an ageing LGBTI community that values and recognises the unique needs of LGBTI people. I think it's such a shame and that's such an understatement that this conference is taking place during the Commonwealth Government's Marriage Equality Postal Survey, which I think has proven to be even more depressing and mean-spirited than we originally feared. And this is not something that the Victorian government uh, wanted or endorsed. This survey undermines one of my very closely held values that no one should be discriminated against. But now that it's happening, we are determined to do whatever we can to support our LGBTI Victorians. As you know, there has been a surge in the number of calls received by mental health and LGBTI services, both here in Victoria and elsewhere, for people seeking help and advice since this postal survey began. The government has allocated $1 million to Victorian organisations to help them keep up with this increased demand. The Victorian AIDS Council and Drummond Street Services are leading the delivery of this additional money and I really would like to thank those agencies for the work that they do, uh, the life-saving work that they do. While many LGBTI people live healthy, connected, happy and positive lives, the LGBTI community in general experiences poorer health and wellbeing outcomes than other Victorians across a number of areas. This is particularly true for transgender and gender diverse Victorians who experience high level of mental ill health, including depression, anxiety and suicide. Um, one of the other things I did in my previous life, Liam, was I managed Lifeline in Ballarat and uh, there were many calls that came through around mental health and suicide prevention for um, a whole range of people, including the LGBTI community. Um, although the environment in Australia is changing, LGBTI people still face discrimination, cultural or religion alienation, stigma or abuse. And due to these experiences, many hide their sexuality, gender identity or intersex status, which can cause distress, isolation or poor self-esteem. This is particularly true of older LGBTI people who have lived through a period when being LGBTI could result in imprisonment, enforced medical cures, loss of employment or rejection by family, friends and the wider community. 
For these and other reasons, many older LGBTI people conceal their sexual orientation or gender identity when accessing aged care facilities for fear of rejection or negative attitudes. It's therefore vital for the health and well-being of LGBTI people that agencies supplying aged care facilities and community and home-based care understand the specific needs and provide a place that is welcoming, that is supportive and that is safe. That is why I'm so pleased to be speaking on behalf of the Andrews Government at this third National LGBTI Ageing and Aged Care Conference because in Victoria, LGBTI equality is just not negotiable. The Victorian Government has done a range of things. Uh, appointed Martin Foley as Australia's First Minister for Equality. Appointed Australia's First Gender and Sexuality Commissioner, Ro Allen, um, who's doing a brilliant job. Is Ro here? Oh, I love it. Established the Victorian Government LGBTI Task Force, supported by specialist working groups. Delivered a formal state apology in Parliament to Victorians convicted under homophobic laws and introduced an expungement scheme to remove convictions from criminal records. We have driven legislative reform, established new programs, sponsored Victoria's first Pride Centre and much more. Many of these initiatives specifically acknowledge and respond to the needs of LGBTI elders. In 2015, the Victorian Government established an LGBTI task force to guide the work of the government and to make sure policy, programs and services are inclusive. One of the working groups, the Health and Human Services Working Group, advises on housing, homelessness, mental health, public health and health promotion and ageing and aged care for LGBTI communities. A key achievement of this group is the development of the Rainbow Equality online resource last year. Rainbow Equality was developed to assist mainstream health and community service agency identify and adopt inclusive practices and become more responsive to the health and wellbeing needs of LGBTI individuals and communities. Other age-specific initiatives within Victoria include LGBTI-focused activities as part of the next week's Victorian Seniors Festival, LGBTI-inclusive practice training for aged care assessment services, and recognising the unique perspective of the LGBTI community in the current debate in Victoria around end-of-life and palliative care issues. Aged care services can make a real difference in the lives of older LGBTI people, some of whom have spent a lifetime living in fear. So it's essential that when providing services to older LGBTI people, service organisations support a person's right to be safe and their right to cultural and sexual expression, intimacy and privacy. I'm delighted Victoria is an Australian leader when it comes to supporting the rights of our LGBTI citizens. Victoria will be home to Australia's first Pride Centre, as I mentioned before, as part of the Andrews Government's equality agenda. Although I have to say that Ballarat, where I'm from, actually did have the first Pride Hub. It started a while ago by a group of fantastic people. Are there any Ballarat people here today? So, yes? Great. Yeah, well, it's at the Trades and Labor Council, so if anyone's visiting, please pop in and say hi to this amazing group of hard-working people. I just went off script then. Um, the Victorian Government is putting $15 million toward the Pride Centre, which will be bigger than San Francisco's LGBTI community, and yes, bigger is better. Sometimes size does matter. Um, it will showcase LGBTI art and history, bring together advisory, health and support services and feature community spaces to provide a safe social environment. It will also serve as a hub for LGBTI groups and organisations, sharing ideas and resources to further their work in supporting equality, diversity and inclusion across the state. Because equality is just not negotiable in Victoria. Um, I'd really want to thank you all for coming together at this fantastic conference. I think it's an absolute gift to have time to be with people who understand, who get it. I have a son with a severe disability and when I go to disability groups, there are unspoken things that we all know, that we know um, 
we know about the barriers that face us. We know about the systems that may be against us, but we also know about the love and the care and the compassion that we have for each other. And in day-to-day -day lives, we sometimes forget that. So you're all here, you're all here together. So please remember that over the next couple of days and just love it. So thank you very much for your time this morning and please enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you so much.